Okay, there we are, seventh grade, hello. So lesson six is on tree diagrams, and tree diagrams are a way to help us come up with a complete sample space for complicated events. If, it's, if you're trying to think of um, all the different ways an event could happen, um, say you're rolling two number cubes, and you want to know all the different possibilities that could happen if you roll the two number cubes, a tree diagram can be helpful. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to do that today in lesson six. Uh, the first example, this, this part right here is just a complicated example about why you would need a tree diagram because it's hard to imagine all the different ways that something could happen. You can read that on your own if you want. But, um, but this is what you need to know, is that the tree diagrams are um, a way to display all the possible outcomes visually. This is what, this is the part you need to know, okay? And I'm a big believer in visualizing things instead of trying to do it all in your head. We need to see it to understand it. So a tree diagram helps us really and truly see logically that we have all the possible outcomes of an event. So our example here in example one is a family that plays games every night. They just take turns between board games and card games. And the way they decide is they use this tetrahedral die, that's a number cube, and since you've probably never heard of that before, um, unless you by chance play a game that uses one, it's a four-sided uh, die that is made out, it looks like a pyramid. So all the faces are triangles and it has four faces. So I went to the classroom because I just knew I had one and I wanted to be able to show you, but unfortunately this is all I have, okay? So none of these are tetrahedrons. The, the, the closest I have is an eight-sided, which is called an octahedron, um, but I don't have the tetrahedron, which is the four-sided. I was super bummed because I thought, oh, I have one of those. I can show them. So what I have is um, an eight-sided die. Then all of these are 12-sided die, these uh, blue, yellow, and uh, green. Those are 12-sided. Those are called dodecahedrons. Every one of these, there's 12 faces, so it can have the numbers 1 through 12, and every face is a pentagon, all right? And at every corner, it has three pentagons that meet there, and that's what makes this um, a dodecahedron. It's, called one, it's one of the five platonic solids that you'll learn about when you get to geometry. There's another dodecahedron. So all these are 12-sided. That's 8-sided. These are 20-sided, all right? These are called icosahedrons, and every face of this is a equilateral triangle, and there's 20 triangles that are put together to make that. I think that would be cool for us to make, um, so I'm going to think about that. Um, all right, so here's the deal. They have this four-sided die that I don't have one to show you, but you're, so you're going to have to use your imagination. Um, there is a picture of one, though, in your, in your materials, which I don't think you have. So maybe I'll show it under the document camera just so you can see it. And then what they do is they roll it, and depending on what it lands on, that tells them if they're doing a board game or, okay, so here's a picture of it. So you see every face is a um, triangle. And there's a triangle on the bottom even. And the way you tell what number you get is whatever number is the right way. So number one is upright. And if there's a one here, there'll be a one on all the other faces. So it'll say one all the way around. So that roll right there is a one. Okay, so the way this family does is they roll the dice. And depending on what they get, that, that either means it's a board game or a card game. They have their own little system. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out how, what are all the possible outcomes for how, the order that they play their games on a Monday and a Tuesday. And so this shows you how you set up your tree diagram 
when you have um, two, two or more things or phases in an event. So the first phase would be what they play on Monday night. That'd be the first kind of decision that has to be made. They roll that die and they decide, are we playing a board game or a card game? And then the next phase would be on Tuesday when they roll the die again and decide, are we playing a board game or a card game? So what, when you make a tree diagram, you, talk, you head up the columns with the different phases. Like on Monday, what are we going to do? And then on Tuesday, what are we going to do? So um, they've got it completed for you here. So you, we're not making this ourselves yet. We're just showing you what a tree diagram is. So on Monday, they roll it, and it, it's either going to indicate that they play a board game or a card game, and that's phase one. Then on Tuesday, they do it again. They roll the die, and that decides no matter what happened Monday, Tuesday, they still have a choice between a board game and a card game. So um, it doesn't matter what happened on Monday. They, they roll the die again and make a new decision on Tuesday. So we call that phase two. And then you list the outcomes. And the outcomes you just read along the branches of the tree. So um, this would be BB. What does that mean? A board game on both nights, right? BC would mean a board game on Monday and a card game on Tuesday. CB here means a card game on Monday, board game on Tuesday. CC, card game on Monday and Tuesday. So that's how you make and read a tree diagram. We will do one in a minute, but let's first answer some questions just to kind of make sure we understand, uh, how, you know, what this is showing us. So it, it says um, the situation has more than two stages. That looks a little blurry to me. Sorry, I don't like that. Looks terrible. Let me turn that light back off. No, that looks worse. Okay, well, I guess that's as good as it's going to get. So if the situation has more than two stages, this process would be repeated until all stages have been, been presented. So remember, we just had two nights that we were interested in. We weren't looking at the whole week. But, so this tree diagram has two stages. You can have as many stages. It does get pretty unwieldy, though, if you have um, more than three or four stages. So um, if BB represents two straight nights of board games, what does CB represent? Well, we've kind of already talked about that. But CB means a card game on the first night, board game on the second night. That's what CB means in the outcome column. It says list the outcomes where exactly one board game is played over two days. Exactly one. That means not two board games, but just one. And the two outcomes would be BC and CB. Those are the only two outcomes that have exactly one board game. And there are two of them um, where exactly one board game is played. That's what this is asking. How many outcomes were there? There were two. Okay. So now we're going to go on and we're going to get a little bit more detailed with the same situation where we're going to find out what the probability is of this. So one thing that they didn't tell us before that they're telling us now is that um, when they roll this four-sided die, they say if for this family, a card game will be played if the die lands showing a one. OK. But a board game will be played if the die lands on a two, three or four. So you can see that there's more chances for them to end up playing a board game than it is for them to end up playing a card game. And from 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 one, two, three and four, that's basically. That's all the different ways that the die can land. This is the die sample space right here. Only one of them, okay, one out of four, which is 0.25, is uh, what, what will indicate that they play a card game. The other three, three chances out of four, which is 0.75, will indicate that they play a board game. So what they've done is they've written down the probability right by the outcome. 
So when they roll the die on Monday, they have a 75% chance of playing a board game because three of the four choices are for board games. But they only have a 25% chance to play a card game. And um, then you go to the, you do the same thing for the next phase. The probability is going to be 75% for B, 25% for C, 75% for B, 25% for C. Okay. Now, how do you calculate the probabilities? You multiply them. So that's what we do to find the probability of two events that both happen. In other words, what is the probability of playing a board game on Monday and playing a board game on Tuesday? Then you would multiply 0.75 times 0.75, which is what they did here, and get 0.625. So this, that's what this is saying. By multiplying the probabilities of the outcomes of each stage, we can find the probability for each branch of the tree. So. Here's the first question. The probabilities for two of the four outcomes are shown right here. They want us, us to calculate the probabilities for the two remaining outcomes. So you just follow along the tree, 0.25 times 0.75 and multiply, and then you get 0.1875. Uh, 0.25 and 0.25 multiplied together would be 0.625. So um, to find the probability of two events occurring, both occurring, then that means you multiply, okay? You, rem you remember the other situation where we were trying to find the probability of one or the other occurring, then that's when we add. But if we need both events to happen, you multiply. So just kind of remember and means multiply. So if the probability of B and B, that means you multiply the probabilities, or means add. Okay, that's just a little helpful hint from Mrs. Montijo. All right, next question. What is the probability that there will be exactly one night of board games over the two nights? So exactly one night of board games we've already identified. That would be CB or BC. Okay. And we know the probabilities because we calculated them right here, 0.1875 and 0.1875. So because we are basically saying if either one, they both can't happen, okay, because it's the same two nights. So the and is out of the question. What we're really asking is if you roll a C on or you, you choose a card game on Monday and a board game on Tuesday, or you do a board game on Monday and a card game on Tuesday. If either one of those occur, then that meets the criteria for our event. That would be what we're looking at. So this is an add where we add. When you have an or situation, you add the probabilities and you get 0.375, okay? All right, exercises one through three. These are going to be a little bit more simple and I think a little bit more fun. Anytime we talk about babies, I get super happy. So um, this family um, or two friends meet at a grocery store and remark that a neighboring family just welcomed their second child. It turns out that both children in this family are girls and they are not twins. One of the friends is curious about what the chances are of having two girls in a family's first two births. Suppose that for each birth, the probability of a boy birth is 0.5 and the probability of a girl, girl birth is also 0.5. Okay, um, so we're going to figure it out using a tree diagram. And the first step that you take um, is you think about your phases. What we're trying to figure out is all the different ways two children can be born in a family. No twins, right? So first you, you do baby one, that would be phase one, and then you do baby two, okay? So I think it might be helpful if I just redid this um, on a blank sheet of paper right now. So you wanna think of um, 
the phases of your event, okay, ultimately we want to know what all the different combinations are to have two kids in a family. So for the first baby being born or phase one, the baby could be a boy or a girl. That's pretty straightforward, right? And I'll just go ahead and write the probability right beside it because I know there's a 50-50 chance that it's a boy, 50-50 chance that it's a girl. But now where it gets interesting is we go to baby two. If the first baby is a boy, it does not affect the sex of the next baby. That could either be a boy or a girl. Again, 50% chance of either one. But if the first baby is a girl, same thing. The second baby could be a boy or a girl, okay? And the probability is 50-50. Okay, so that's how you make your tree diagram. So what are our outcomes? What, let's list them. You could have two boys, that's B, B. Or you could have a boy, then a girl, that's B, G. Or you could have a girl, then a boy. Or you could have a girl and then a girl. Okay, so these are all the different ways that, um, all the different outcomes that you could have with a family of four. So, what's the next question? It says, write in the probabilities of each uh, stage's outcome to the tree diagram you developed above and determine the probabilities for each of the four possible birth outcomes for a family with two children. Okay. Well, that's what I've done here. If, um, if there's always a 50% chance that, that you could get a boy or a girl, uh, and we're interested in uh, the probability of a girl and a girl, that means we multiply the probabilities. And 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. So it's going to be 0.25 for all of these situations. Um, but this question makes it a little bit more interesting. What is the probability of a family having two girls? One fourth, 0.25. Is that greater or less than the probability of having exactly one girl? So in other words, a boy and a girl, which is, which is, which is, has the higher probability having a boy and a girl or having two girls? Now, when we say it that way, a boy and a girl, it doesn't matter if the girl comes first and then the boy or the boy comes first and then the girl. That doesn't matter. This, these, pro, these outcomes and probabilities right here represent having a boy and a girl, okay? Or as they say it here, um, having exactly one girl in two births. Both of these have exactly one girl in two births. So we have to figure out what the probability is of having a girl than a boy or a boy than a girl. Because if either one of these happens, that would be exactly one girl and two births, which is what they're asking about. So you kind of have to practice thinking about these events in terms of and and or. So if, 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 if the criteria is to have exactly one girl, this one works or this one works. Now you're not gonna have them both at the same time, that's impossible. So that's why the or matters. It could be a girl boy or it could be a boy girl. So now we're going to add our probabilities and get 0.5. Okay. Good luck on the problem set. Come to office hours if you need me. I always love talking to you guys and have a great day. Bye.